Hey guys. Well, we're here. The final reveal for the uh, YouTube Bottlers community. World War I buddy build. My Ravel Poker DR1 Dry Decker. Flown by Manfred von Richthofen. This is a uh, paint scheme he had in uh, the spring of 1918 when he was shot down and killed. Um, this kit was original tool, originally tooled in 1952, which would make it 64 years old. Uh, it was cleaned up in I think 19 in the 1980s. Uh, so. It's an old bird, to say to say the least. Um, still, given its age, what it is, it it looks like a DR1. So we're gonna call it a DR1. Fit was not too bad on it. It went together pretty smooth. I mean, it takes a little bit of modeling. You have to work the seams and. Putting the top wing on is a pain in the butt, but it always is with the biplanes and and triplanes or any, anything. We we gotta spend that thing up in space by the four single points. It's just a total pain in the butt to get it done, get it to sit right. Um, but I did. We've got the. Uh, the paint color I used was a was a folk art craft acrylics i did a custom mix of lip, lipstick red and licorice black it's probably uh 10 to 1 maybe 12 to 1 on the uh red to the black it's basically almost straight red with just a touch of the black to darken darken deepen it up more than anything else not really to make it darker but to make the red a little deeper and I'm really, really happy how the color came out. And then the craft acrylic I thinned down by about 60% with Future. Um, when I spray the craft acrylics, I use the uh, this is the old external mix, uh, single action airbrush, so I can get. A lot of times the pigments on those are pretty big. And it laid down smooth, real nice. Um, no real orange peel or any bubbling up or or anything on it. Um, decals went down really well. Uh, interesting thing, I'll sh not those show up very well. On the wing, the decals on the top wing. They printed them to look like they were painted over the old paint scheme. So you can kind of see the old iron cross underneath the new one. That's, that's kind of cool. Really looks neat. Makes it look like it was, like it was actually just painted. The new crosses were painted over top of the old one. Uh, I didn't really do any weathering at all on this one. Uh, I kind of wanted it to be like a museum, museum fresh piece. Um, we used eleven thousandths guitar string for the standing rigging, and I used the uh, large Easy Line to do the control cables, and it all worked out real well. Um, I'm probably most proud of the prop. If anybody's followed the build, I've seen, it's already seen tons of pictures of the prop. And I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm really proud of how that turned out. Um, I want to thank Gilbert, among other people, before I did it. The prop, I remember the first video of Gilbert's I ever watched was how to paint a wooden prop uh, a couple of years back. And I went back and revisited that video a couple of times when I was painting this prop. Um, 
Takes us to dump, 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 dump the figures. Oh, mercy, mercy, mercy. They're horrible. Um, the Manfred figure is not too bad. It's really not. Um, could be a lot better, but it's it's passable. Um, as you can see, well, of course, he's on the wrong side of the picture now, but... Uh, It's not too horrible of a sculpt, but say it could be a lot better. Um, and when I display this, I will display that with with him. Um, now the other guys, the mechanics, we'll throw them up here for a second. But boy, they're horrible. Well, I think that's where it needs to be. Is dead. Um, they are just terrible. Um, take a good look at them now because you're never going to see them again. I won't throw them away, but they, they'll never make another appearance, that's for sure. Um, they didn't fit well. They're a horrible sculpt. Uh, it took tons of filler just to close up the seams on them and still didn't get them all closed up. Um, behind their ears and things, there's huge holes. And then, uh, I just fought trying to get that wool color, that blue-gray, greenish denim wool color, their uniforms down. I just finally gave up, guys. I put a wash on them and called them done. Uh, like they, you know, they, if you consider them just a throw-in in the kit, uh, then, you know, they are what they are, but... If you were looking to set up some kind of diorama scene and thinking, wow, I got the figures to go with, no, don't do it. Um, they don't even, with their poses, they don't even fit well against the plane. Um, the only place you can make them sit or stand and look halfway right is basically like this one on each side of the fuselage. And that's pretty much it. And why they will both be standing there like that, who knows. But uh, anyway, those two figures aside, say for the age of the kit, it's really nice. The DR1 was kind of unique in that the actual engine block turned with the prop, as opposed to the, just the crank. The crank case, the crank shaft was stationary, and the engine block rotated around. The crankshaft with the prop. Um, I don't want to get too much into the history of the DR1. If you want to know more about it, there's plenty of information out there. So we'll kind of just stick to the Ravel kit. And so I uh, had fun building it. I may build another one down the road. I've got another one in the stash. Maybe do a different paint scheme on. Because uh, the Flying Circus. It has lots of different paint schemes on our DR1s. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching this for the YouTube community, World War One Buddy Build. And uh, stay tuned for some stills, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.